But you can do something that's slightly better than greedy. Okay? Then just deciding between Netflix and your tutorial now, you can actually do something slightly clever, more clever. And this is something called Beam Search. So how Beam Search works, with 3D decoding, you're looking at your current output and you're just looking at the one best thing and you go on with life. With Beam Search, what you do is you say, I'm not going to consider all 50,000 possible stuff and consider all of them for the next time step. But let's just consider not just the one best thing, but let's consider the two best things. Or maybe the five best things. Okay, Five is still reasonable. And then what you do is you move on to the next time step. At the next time step, you again, you look at all the possible choices that you have and you say, okay, let's just consider the five best out of these. Okay, and then you go on to the next time step and the next time step and the next time step. And in this way, you can consider more than one. Um, so what you would get is if I do beam search with a beam width of five, then I end up with five possible hypotheses for the output of this sentence. That's where I would end up. And I'll show you exactly how to do beam search in a second. Okay. But that's the benefit. So greedy search, you get one output. With a beam width of five, you get five possible outputs. Okay. That and what I can then do, if I have a beam width of five, is score all five hypotheses according to some external language model. And then I can actually incorporate it in that way. Okay. So Beam search is not guaranteed to find the overall optimal path. It's still a heuristic. You might screw up because you're only considering your five best stuff. The best thing, the overall best thing might be number six on my list and now I'm not considering that path. Okay? Um, so it's not guaranteed to find the overall optimal thing, but it will probably do, in most cases, do better than greedy search. Greedy search is a subset of beam search where your beam with is one. Well, you're just considering the one best thing. Okay, so I'm going to go through the beam, little bit of beam search example, and then we'll drink coffee. Okay, so um, we're still throwing pies, I think, in this example. So what happened was we got some input. We had our input sentence X, okay, which goes here, and then right at the end we got our final hidden representation that. The crucial one and then we're conditioning our decoder on this thing and we start we always start with the start of the sentence start of sentence is here okay and what pops out here is y hat one which thomas told us is this enormous vector of probabilities okay cool you with me with greedy search what you would do is and in this example um, there's the word, let's say the word it. In this example, the word it has a probability. Uh, uh, I'll work in log. So I'll just take the log of the probability. Okay. Um, is some number. And the word uh, e is some other number. And these two words, um, for this example, I'll use a beam width of two. Okay. These two words are the two highest scoring words. He has a log probability of minus 0 0.7 and it has a log probability of 0 0.6 very quickly greedy search which one would i pick no and uh, not 0 0.7 there's a negative there negative. it right okay well done julian uh, i said no to 0 0.7 so you knew it was the other one but i'll still give you credit okay yes greedy search you take the less less negative thing okay 0 0.6 what's wrong no, I got it wrong. Okay, yes. Leah May always gets angry at me if I mess up the names. Um, okay. Anyway, so a greedy search, you would do 0 0.6 and you would go on with life. But now what you do, pay attention, is you keep track of both of these, ye and it. And you make little copies of your decoder. One of the, the copies will feed in ye to the next time step. The other copy will feed in it. And just pay attention here, the number, the moment you feed in a different thing at the next time step, all the rest of the decoder steps actually change. Your weights and stuff stay the same, but the vectors will all be different. Okay, cool. So we, we looked at, sorry, this is just the representation of this vector. We looked at all the different out, possible outputs and we figured out that, oh, out of all these, let's just make them orange, this one and this one 
was the best and I continue with them. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to go through this pretty slowly. But now we've got a little decoder that we copy for the word he. Okay, and this decoder looks like this. We start with our red vector and then we feed that in and we have our start of sentence thing that gives us our hidden representation. Stuff happens at the top, but I don't care about that too much. Okay, and then I feed the next time step with what? With E. Okay, and then I check what happens. We'll talk about that now. Um, okay, I also have another one exactly the same. Let's see if this works. Amazing. Okay, cool. Exactly the same, except we're feeding it with it. This vector is not the same as this vector, and the outputs will look very, very different. Okay, so now we get this enormous output here. Okay, this is y hat two, and here we also have an enormous output over our whole vocabulary. This is also y hat two, not the same as the one at the top. Okay, and what we do is we look at the two highest numbers in this vector. Okay. We consider the two not highest numbers, which in this case is hit and struck. Okay. You take the log probabilities that you get that you get here, and you add it to the one from the previous time step. Okay. Because I don't want to just check what I'm doing now, which is the most optimal. I also want to keep track of what happened in the past because I'm trying to optimize the overall over all my time steps. So on this previous time step, you add a log prob of minus 0 0.7, okay? You add that to whatever the number is there. I think in this case, that number is minus one, and that number is minus 2.2. .2. That's the two best stuff in this vector. I add that to my previous time step, and now I have this, you can think of it as a big vector over all your vocabulary, but for the just two high scoring ones, you've got minus one, plus 0 0.7 and you get minus 1.7 for hit and for struck you have minus 2.9 and you've got that value for struck. Are you with me? You with me? Okay, you do exactly the same for the bottom half. So here we have it, we look at the top two best ones, we add that to the negative 0 0.6 that we got before, you have these top two ones. Okay, and now you've got, now you're at this time step and we have all these numbers. What do you do now? So I've got hit minus 0.7, minus 0.29, got minus 1.8, and was um, minus 1.6. What do I need next? We have a beam search of two, a beam width of two. We're keeping track of the two best paths. I'll give you four paths and their scores. The one path is he hit minus 0.7, he struck minus 2.9, it got minus 1.8, and it was. Minus 1.6. Each one of those is a hypothesis, a partial hypothesis for the translation. I have a beam width of two, so I'm keeping track of the two best translations hypothesis throughout. What do I do next? I mean, I don't stop here, sorry. What? You go through um, minus 1.7 and minus 1.6. You go through was and hit. Okay. Uh, who agrees? Who disagrees? Who doesn't vote? Bad. <laughs> Guys, come on. South African politics can't be fixed if you don't vote. You need to vote. Okay? Uh, hit and was. That's exactly right. So what you're doing now is you take these and you, you add a third step of the decoder and now you have a key hit. You feed hit back in and you get another score. Here you have start of sentence, it was, and you feed on and you go. So you'd expand these two... Um, that one you'd expand and that one you would expand. Look at the top two. Again, get a whole bunch of hypotheses. Pick the best two out of all the paths and continue in this way. Is everyone happy-ish? Cool. So, if I do this actually for this example, then I end up with... So, I'm not showing... Um, sorry, on the graph here, this was the local score. So, this was the... Uh, here at the bottom, I write it up. So this is the local score of just y2 given my input sentence and my previous output. But what I actually want is the joint probability of both of the characters, okay? So on the next slide, I will only show basically the overall score up to that um, time point. So I won't show these things. I'll show the log props after they've been added, okay? So this is what we get. 
Um, okay. Um, so after we, the last time we saw this example, we stopped. Uh, we stopped at this this point here, and we decided to expand hit and was, and we went on like this. So at the next time point, we got a me hit struck, and out of those, we picked the two ones with the highest scores, which was. Minus 2.8, minus 2.9, minus 2.5, 2.8. So we selected that one and that one. We expanded both of them. So we got that. Out of all of those options, I picked the two with uh, the highest probability. It's that one and that one. Okay, cool. I expanded them. Got this. Uh, and with this, in this case, the two actually comes from the same branch. So you go there and there. Okay, you with me? Here, now something interesting happens. Just pay attention. So I've expanded a uh, and one, and I get this vector. Okay, that's the po possible hypothesis scores. Minus 4.3, minus 4.6, minus 5, and minus 4.5. What do I expand, David, out of those scores? I'm just asking you pre-primary school mathematics, what's the highest numbers here, the two highest numbers out of that list? <laughs> minus uh, uh, minus 4.3, minus 4.6, minus 5, and minus 4.5. I'm asking a one year old, like my son, can do this and he can't speak. It's okay? Called, it's called 4.3 and 4.5. Okay. I believe. Yes. <laughs> I mean, we can make vowels. Okay, cool. <laughs> Okay, yes, that's right. I'll ask him tonight and check what he says. Okay. <laughs> that's right. So, okay, cool. I expand those two. What's the problem here, David? Well, one of the... the okay, this one is easy, right? That's a joke. Um, my son can also do that. Okay, so he expands those two. Well done. Okay, this one? Well, you need to, you need to choose now whether you're going to end the sentence or continue on, I guess. Yes, that's right. So pay attention. This now just becomes actually, you're, you're just saying, okay, I've ended the sentence, and then my next time step, I will just pretend that there is a minus 4.5 here, which is the end of the sentence, because that is my. So if I expand that one, I can't expand it more, but this is still one of the hypotheses I consider at my next time step. Okay, so then you expand this one, and now you've got these three, uh, three options. David, out of those three, what are the two lowest numbers? That's right. Now both of them are the end of the sentence, so now I can stop. I bet both of my best hypotheses have an end of sentence. It's actually interesting, this hypothesis here is shorter than this hypothesis here by one word, but that's fine, right? Something just as well shorter than others. And some hypotheses for sentences would be shorter than others. Okay. Kevin, do you have a question? No, sorry, it's not a <laughs> that's, that's fine. David can hear everything you're saying. Um, cool. Okay, so that would be one hypothesis. David, what's the translation here? Sorry, I'm really what's picking What's the translation here? Yes, what's the, the according to a beam width uh, of two? He hit the uh, width. Okay, that's five. really hard actually. So I normally go from the back to the front, <laughs> okay? So this is the best number. This is the one hypothesis I will pick. And then you can just go pi a uh, with me hit he. Okay, that's not the output, obviously. He hit me with a pi end of sentence. That would be the best hypothesis. Does that make sense? Cool. Banner, for your language model, you now have two paths. This path and this path. You go and rescore them. You can maybe weigh the scores because you could get a log prop according to your language model and maybe you know do 0 0.1 from the language model and 0 0.9 from this model and, and weigh them in that way. Does this make sense? Perfect. To really hammer the point of how oh, this is better than greedy search, let's just say we did the same thing, but we actually took the greedy decision. Okay. Then what would happen at this step here, between negative 0.7 and negative 0.6, if I did greedy search, I would have picked it. Okay. At the next time step, I would have picked out of all these options. Okay. Well, I would have just followed the best options. So I would actually have just looked at expanding this one. I wouldn't have considered this top half. Okay? But I've expanded this one and I would pick minus 0.6. Let's just do the greedy search in red. Okay? I would have picked minus 
Okay? And then at the next time step, I would have taken the best path which, which would have ended me here. If you compare this to the front, uh, to the, the other options, if you compare the, the case with two options, taking the greedy decision here is actually pretty good, right? Negative 0.6 is higher than negative 0.7, so that's fine. At the next time step here, if you did the greedy thing, you would, would have picked minus 0.6, which is out of these four options actually still the best thing to do, right? So I would have still picked that, and greedy is then at this time point still fine. But then if you look at the next time step here, if you expanded things, then you would have taken the minus 2.9 route and you would have expanded this with greedy search. And this means out of those numbers, the lowest one is the one with the word me, I think. Um, and you would have gotten stuck there. You would have um, me, he hit me, minus 2.5 is better than it was hit, according to this model. And if you just did greedy, you would have missed this potential better path. Even though at this point you are right, watching Netflix is better than doing your tutorial, okay? But then later on in life you regret your decisions because you didn't get to, he hit me. Okay. Okay. Um. <laughs> yes. So the one thing that sometimes happens with beam search is um, you're keeping track of all these hypotheses um, the thing is, it, it often happens that the, the beam search actually prefers shorter hypotheses, okay? Because when you're adding, when you're, when you're extending things, obviously you're adding more, you're multiplying in more probability, so the overall probability tends to get smaller because you have more terms in your, uh, in your, um, hypothesis, okay? So... Very often what people do is they penalize very short sequences. The dumbest thing, and that might, the most extreme thing is basically to get a per word log probability where you divide by the number of things in your, um, in your, in your hypothesis. Um, that's very extreme, so normally what they do is that they just slightly penalize to push down the scores for, um, for shorter sequences, so you actually have longer sequences. In principle, if life was wonderful, butterflies, no load shedding, then um, this, the end of sentence um, symbol should have actually modeled the length of a, 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 a sequence. Because the, if you have a perfect R and N that really can remember everything, then the model should be able to remember how long a sen sentence is and then automatically penalize longer and shorter sentences. But in practice, that doesn't happen. So they normally at this uh, penalization term. And I think I just write down one option there, which is to normalize by the number of words in your postal hypothesis.